If you're like me and you literally have almost nowhere to film your YouTube videos apart from a dusty cupboard under the stairs, then I have a solution for you and even better news, it's free. So don't go away. Hey guys, Mike here and welcome back to the channel. Now many of my loyal subscribers are aware of my adventure over the last couple of years when I moved myself and my family from Auckland, New Zealand to Shanghai, China. We landed right when COVID was taken off. We had a three month lockdown and we almost starved. I ended up in one of those COVID camps and our visas expired. It was quite a start. If you're interested to check out the summary of our adventure, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. Now also, if you want to skip the preamble, go to the time on the screen now. But stay if you like, it's, it's good background, it's good info. Anyway, that aside, one of the things that's been a struggle is making YouTube videos. Prior to coming to China, I was putting out several videos a month, but since I've been here, I've literally made just a handful. Now, there are plenty of reasons for that. Check out that video and you'll understand, but one of the main reasons has been that I've got nowhere I can set up and film. We're living in a small apartment here in Shanghai, small bedrooms, bathroom, kitchen, and living slash dining slash laundry area, with nowhere else I can set up and make this sort of talking head video very easily. I don't like filming with other people around for one thing, but even when there are some limited opportunities when I'm home alone, I have no suitable space to set up and film other than against a plain wall. I left all my gear in New Zealand, so I can't light it very well. And if I was to use a corner of the living space or bedroom, it just doesn't look very YouTubery. That, that is a word. It is. Now, I have tried filming outside a few times in the compound where we live, but that brings its own set of challenges in terms of noise and activity happening around me, including noisy and nosy people or other distractions. So, I've been a bit stuffed. And many of you will know exactly what it's like filming in your own home. It can be an absolute battle. In the short amount of time you've managed to grab, you're running around like a chook with its head cut off. You usually end up breaking something or forgetting to plug something in like your microphone. And then when you do manage to film something, there's clutter in the background you didn't notice until you edit. Lighting fluctuates like a moody teenager. I've got two of those myself. And finding suitable locations to film in feels like you're searching for a unicorn in your sock drawer. Renting studios is a budget buster and green screens require even more space to set up. But recently, I've been seeing a lot of videos on YouTube about using artificial intelligence to generate backgrounds for your videos. Some of them where you can generate completely new full backgrounds and some where you use part of your existing background and use AI to make up the rest, which gave me an idea. Now, while being able to do that is great in theory, I thought it would probably cost a lot of money as well as having to invest a lot of time and energy to learn how it works and faff around to get it anywhere usable, let alone believable. But I looked further and saw a lot of information that centered on two particular pieces of software. And in this video, I'll show you both of them, including the one I used, how I used it, and my end result. The first one is called Leonardo.ai. I'll add a link in the description below. It's free, but there is a paid subscription version. However, to have a play around, I just use the free one. In this version, you get allocated a certain amount of daily tokens, and every image you generate spends some of your tokens. You get a daily limit, and once you've used them all, you're done for 24 hours. Now, that's the hook to get you to upgrade to the paid version. Now, I think the paid version also unlocks even more capability that isn't available in the free option. Anyway, once I created a free account, I went to the image generation section. To use this, you just type a description of what you want. So I started with something that said, a bright, well-lit YouTube studio. Furniture is blonde wood. Monitors in the background feature the Shanghai skyline. There is tech gear and gadgets on the shelves in the background, including drones and camera gear. Now, to my amazement, straight off the bat, no joke, these are the images that it came back with. I was totally blown away. If it didn't completely give me what I was looking for, I could go back to the prompt and adjust it slightly to get a new image. There are tutorials online that explain the best way to phrase things so the images generated are closer to what you want. But to be fair, straight off the bat, I was pretty impressed with what it was bringing back. Don't forget, this is my first attempt at brand new software 
using the free version. And then I type something like, the front edge of a desk in the foreground and a bright, well-lit YouTube studio container, RGB lights, gadgets, and tech equipment on shelves. Images on the monitors should be of the Shanghai skyline. And these are the images I got back. Again, really, really impressive. And actually, I thought, quite artistic and beautiful. The way it pretty much captured everything I was looking for and in such amazing detail from a very basic description, I found just amazing. Now, as amazing as this is, and I may well use it more in the future, for me at the moment, this isn't what I need. The best way to make this particular tool work for me would be if I was planning to totally remove my background and use one of these images instead. Then I'd need to either use a green screen so I could replace the background or use features in some editing software like Final Cut Pro that intuitively removes the background for you. However, for that to work and to look any good, you'd need to light yourself in such a way that looked believable against your fake background. And as I said, I'd left all my lighting gear back in New Zealand, so it's not gonna work for me. Yet, amazing though, right? The images that can be generated just by typing a couple of sentences is nothing short of incredible. And I literally spent five to 10 minutes doing this. If you invest a bit more time and really utilize the full capability of the technology of this tool, then I've got no doubt that you could produce some truly stunning stuff. Stunning stuff. Yes, stunning. So on to the second tool I wanted to talk about, which is the one I've ended up using for now. Now, this particular tool allows you to make changes to the existing background without replacing it altogether. It allows you to add or remove objects and blend them into your footage. Now, given the cynical world we live in. A cynical world. Okay, okay, no more. But anyway, given the cynical world we live in, I thought, there's no way, it cannot be that easy. There's a hook, a catch, uh, oh, one more thing you need to know type of thing that bursts your bubble and puts you right back where you started. But there isn't. I tried it, I used it, I experimented with it for about 20 minutes one evening and got really, really excited because it, it worked, it actually worked. And you don't have to be a software wizard, you don't have to have a degree in graphic design or anything like that. So honestly, I'm here to tell you that as a person who has none of those things, if you wanna make videos, but at the moment you don't have anywhere but a plain wall to film against once a week when everyone's out of the apartment, then this is for you. It's called Adobe Firefly. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Now, Adobe Firefly is a generative AI tool and it covers functions such as text to image generation where you literally describe your vision or concept and you get unique images based on your input. Very similar to Leonardo AI. And then there's generative fill where you can remove or add objects to existing images, which is what I used. It also has a bunch more functionality, but to be fair, I know this is the feature I wanted, so I zeroed in on that and never looked at any of the other bits and pieces. But feel free. Now, the generative fill option is what I used. I simply took an image from my video, a freeze frame that I exported from the timeline of my video editing software, one from the video where I'm recording my talking head video against a plain background, in my case, a wall. I uploaded it to Adobe Firefly, and then I used the generative AI feature to add things like a wall clock, computer monitor, plant, just by selecting the area I wanted the object in, typing a basic description of what I wanted and waiting for the results to come back. Now, the software brings back a few images to select from, and if you don't like what it came up with, you can ask it to give you more, or you can go back and adjust your description. But, I hear you say, you've adjusted an image, and I thought you wanted to use it in your video. Videos move, images don't. Well, that's true, but that's where the magic comes in. Once you're finished, you download the image, import it into your video editing software, ask out around yourself, add a color grade if that's what you're into, and there you have it, a talking head video that doesn't look half bad. Certainly better than the boring backdrop you started with. Now, the reason why this solution works for me so well is because I'm sitting relatively still and I'm not moving around too much. If you're jumping around and flapping your arms like a madman, well, that happens. Now, this isn't meant to be a tutorial about how to use the tool. There are much better videos out there that can show you how. But seriously, it's very intuitive and easy to use. And if you jumped on it and just started experimenting, you'll get the hang of it really fast. 
I literally did this in a few minutes. And I know if I invested an hour or two, I could come up with something even better. But if you're in a hurry, it's not a bad solution, right? Especially for people like me, who at the moment really have very, very limited options. So for me, this is a bit of a game changer. And I'm hoping if you're in a similar situation and you've made it all the way to the end of the video, then this will help you out too. I am now very excited about the possibilities that this technology can bring. And the scary thing, or should I say exciting thing, is that this stuff is in its infancy. The things we'll be able to do with future generations of the software will be amazing. Or should we be scared? Skynet begins to learn at a geometric rate. It becomes self-aware at 2.14 a.m. Eastern Time, August 29th. Yeah, I reckon we should be excited. And for those of you who are heading to the comments section now to go, oh, why do you ruin your video by putting these clips in, blah, blah, blah. Get a life. Or, as a very wise person once said, and a quote I subscribe to is... Get busy living. Or get busy dying. Now, that aside, if you're making videos on a budget and you're looking to level up the audio side of your content creation, then you should definitely check out this video, where I give you 15 top tips on selecting the right and best value wireless microphone system for your video making. Thanks for tuning in guys and girls, I truly thank you for your support and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Take